Hello, 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 and welcome to In The Mix with yours truly, Jeannie Ortega, coming to you from the Sunshine State, Orlando, Florida. It is my honor to be your host today on TBN Salsa. Thank you to Matt and Lori Crouch, as well as Reverend Samuel Rodriguez for another opportunity to boast on God. With this show, it's my heart to highlight people in movies, music, media, and ministry that are doing things for the kingdom of God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God, from heaven. But it also says that he's given a gift to each and every one of us to share with each other as good stewards of his amazing grace. And today's show, we have a group of people that are doing just that. First, I'll start by telling you a story, a true story, unfortunately, and then I'll introduce you to my first guest. On June, on June 12, 2016, 49 people were killed when a gunman opened fire with an assault rifle at Pulse, a gate nightclub here in Orlando, Florida. Among the people there was my guest today, Luis Javier Ruiz. He's a Puerto Rican, man, a U.S. veteran, a pastor's kid, who survived the deadly shooting. In the aftermath, while many people came together to fight against gun violence and celebrate gay pride, God led Luis down a different path. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Luis, thank you so much for, <laughs> for coming me. and being a part of the show. It's, uh, yeah. it's definitely one of the more serious shows that I've done. Yeah. Um, but I really felt that it was something that we should talk about. Yeah. Um, first of all, thank God that yeah. you're here. Amen. Praise I'm, God for that. I'm so honor. grateful that, um, that you're alive, Amen. that um, you were not one of the, the, the victims. You, were, uh, you came out victorious from that. I want to start there. Let's talk about that day. Let's talk about what happened. And, um, and then we'll get more into your story because I want the people to know okay. uh, your life. Sweet, awesome. Um, well, thank you for having me. Um, I can't believe I'm here. It's such an honor. I grew up with TBN watching wow, it. Wow. Who'd ever be thinking that I'd be sitting down yeah. sharing my story? Oh, God has a plan. God does have a plan. Um, so it was, um, I was actually in the church for a whole year. I had um, went back to church. Um, I tried to uh, do it, I guess, on my own strength. Mm. And I didn't have uh, the right tools. It was more like religion. It was more like legalism than actual mm. relationship with Christ. After that whole year, I, had, I stopped seeing a lot of my friends. I cut a lot of people off. Mm. Um, and then the struggles just became so real. They became mm. so hard and I didn't know what to do. I bottled it up inside instead mm. of like speaking out to pastors or people that could actually help me. Yeah, pray you through. Yeah. so. Um, I saw some friends at the mall and it was actually my birthday weekend. So they, they threw a party for me like years ago. And they were like, hey, we haven't seen you for like a whole year. How you been? And I was like, well, you know, I was, I've been going to church, been trying to, you know, yeah. find myself. And um, in that, uh, they invited me to come hang out at their house. They said they were gonna, you know, hang out, have a little party, have some cake or whatever. And I said, yeah, sure, let's do that. The, you know, the struggles just became so real that I threw everything out the window. And I was just like, you know what? I need a drink. I need, mm. <laughs> I need to go hang out with some friends and, mm. you know, see where it goes from there. Yeah. And what's funny about this is that my mother, um, uh, she's a praying woman. Mm. I mean, she loves me, but she never compromised, but she loved me, you know, and yeah. uh, she would always pray and, and God spoke to her in a dream. Wow. And she wrote me a text message and she said, hey, I just want to let you know that in my dream, I saw people dying. I saw a lot of your friends dying. Wow. And I see a lot of blood everywhere. And, and you were crying out saying, mom, help me, help me. <sighs> And I, of course, oh. laughed, you know, because I was just like, Mom, you don't need to scare me like that to go to church, you know? Yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> I'll go to church if you, <laughs> you want me to. You thought she was just, yeah. like, doing anything to get yeah. you. Yeah, so wow. <clears throat> um, in the midst of all that, a week later is when it actually happened. Um, I ended up going to a friend's house, and we hung out there. And um, in the middle of that, everyone's like, so what are we going to do now? Do you guys want to go to Pulse? You know, it's the end of gay days, which is huge in Orlando, Florida. Um, and we, you know, everyone just decides to go. 
when we went there, um, I saw a lot of friends that they were like, hey, weren't you going to church? And what are you doing here? Mm. And, you know, like there was all kinds of, you know. Yeah. And um, a lot of them said happy birthday. Yeah. And I never thought that it would also be a farewell on that wow. one night. God. You know. And as the night went by, it was last call for alcohol. And it was a very fun night. Everyone was saying hi. I haven't seen people for years, so just to be able to see people again, see how they're doing yeah. and everything was just amazing. And after that is when they did last call for alcohol and um, this guy's yelling. He's screaming and he's like, run for your life, run, run, run. And my friend looks over to me and he's all like, what is wrong with him? Why are they yeah. trying to kick us out already? They just did last call for oh, alcohol. Wow. You know, I want to get one more drink. Yeah. Um, and in the midst of that, that's when the shooter was right there in front of us. And, and uh, for what I understand, a couple of the friends that you were with, did they not make it? Right. Um, the group, uh, we were a big group, and wow. um, a lot of them did not make it back. So, and I remember that night just texting them to find out where, you know, what's going on and everything. And in the midst of that, um, calling my mom when I was on the floor trying to get out, wow. my phone dies. Wow. So my mom hears these shots in the background. She's hearing oh, it. God. She had told me that she woke my father up and <sighs> she was like, wake up, they're killing our son. They're killing all these people. And it was just, she said she had got on her knees, activated the church prayer line. I mean, it was a very, very intense night for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm emotional just yeah. thinking about it, especially just after mass shooting, after mass shooting that yeah. we're seeing in this country. It's just really heartbreaking. Um, that things like this even happen. Um, but you get out, uh, you were kind of trampled on, correct? Yeah. You ended up in the hospital. Yes, yeah. Um, but thank God, no uh, severe Imagine. injuries. Yeah, because of a praying mother. Yes, praise <laughs> the Lord for a praying and mother. And I believe that, 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 that in the prayer life or the prayer culture, it was just activated to the point to where I had a protection over me. Yeah. I just thank God because it could have been worse. Mm -hmm. I could have not been here sitting with you right so now. So what happened from there? Because yeah. the reason why I connected with you, I heard about this freedom march with these young people that were gathering together to march yeah. uh, about their freedom from the homosexual lifestyle, which it sounds, you know, and then if there, there'll be people watching and they'll be like, okay, <laughs> yeah. you know, but yeah. what I loved about hearing you is just hearing your true heart yeah. and knowing that God definitely did a work in your life. Right. Nobody can take that testimony away from Amen. you. They That's can right. doubt what you say, yeah. but they can't steal your truth. And I wanted you to share just kind of a little bit about that, just where after from that night, what happened to you get to the point that now you're in Washington, D.C., marching yeah. in this Freedom March? Yeah, so um, as I, uh, well, I found out that I was HIV positive afterwards because they sent an email to all the survivors and they're like, hey, we want you to go get checked. There was a lot of blood spilled, you know, and I went to go get checked and then I found out. Wow. Um, in the midst of all this, I'm just asking God for forgiveness. I'm coming back to the Lord. I'm still partying and doing my yeah. own thing, you know, yeah. but I'm trusting God. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm saying, hey, if I fall, I fall, whatever the case may be, I want God now. I want mm -hmm. Jesus in my life for mm -hmm. sure, for sure. And um, in that is where I see this documentary. Mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of amazing overcomers on there sharing their story wow. with boldness, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it's not on a judgment zone. It's like they're sharing their love, like spreading love, because that's the way Jesus came, in love. Yeah. So there was no hatred to that. So I fell in love with that automatically. Wow. I was like, I need to be a part of this. Yeah. I need to connect. And especially because you had been feeling that struggle yeah. and you were oppressing exactly. it. Exactly. And, and I think it happens a lot in the church yeah. is that oh, yeah. there'll be people that we all have things. Yeah, yeah. And and if you don't bring that to the Lord or bring mm. it to someone that can help you yeah. walk it through with the Word of God, yeah. you end up feeling yeah. a prisoner to it. I think it's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear in the church. Um, perfect love casts out fear. Amen. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like we have a lot of that fear where we're scared to talk about this issue. Mm. And then with everybody else on the outside, with the media, the social, everything, they're scared to talk about it. So yeah. the outside is winning. Attacked. You yeah. know, and then we don't know how to fight it in the church. So I believe that God is raising up people like us mm -hmm. to come into the churches and show this documentary and show the true message of Jesus and say, hey, you're not alone. We're here. We're going to fight this together, mm -hmm. you know, but we're coming in love. We're not judging. We're not hating. Um, it's beautiful. And that's how I ended up at the Freedom March. 
You know, mm. a lot of people, they thought they were like, oh, what are they doing? They, they got these fences, uh, billboards out, and yeah. they're coming with hate and everything. And that's not what we came with. We came with love. Like, it yes. was so crazy that what they saw, because at no point was anybody beating anybody up. We were sharing mm. the message of Jesus, the yes. love that we have for the Father, the transforming love mm. that he has for us and that he can change anybody. Mm. So this is showing people that Jesus, again, is on the front lines of this nation. And not only that, he's still in the work. He's still in the uh, transforming business, Yes. you know, and, and that's what we're trying to do. You know, we're just trying to spread that love and tell people, like I said, that you're not alone. We're still here for you. Amen. You know? And you guys look up this incredible man of God and his story. It's so inspiring. And I'll continue to, to, to just follow your journey and, and be here as a support Thank for you. you. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, we, we're going to wrap this segment up to, to, to move on, but definitely just stay in touch because yeah. you have such a great testimony. Pastor's kid, found yourself at Pulse, survivor, now using your platform for this. Amen. So the, the film that really you're talking about that really made an impact um, is called Here's My Heart. Yeah. And it's a documentary featuring the testimonies of 12 overcomers who have obtained freedom from the LGBTQ lifestyle through the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. Check out the trailer. I started having attractions towards girls at third grade. I can take care of a girl better than these guys can. I used to walk around with a strap on and rub up against girls on purpose just to make them think that I was a man. I was with a different guy every day. I was obsessed. My world revolved around her. And I figured this is what, you know, this is what love is. And it was in this season of my life that I found out that I became HIV positive. I would have called myself by curious. I had this thing where I was calling myself an androgynous. One thing about not knowing your identity, you just do what you want to do and you say, well, I guess this is me. And that's where the bisexuality came into play. There is a path that is before each person that seems right. Everything that I had been choosing seemed right. It felt right. Regardless of the feelings, it was still destroying and dividing my family. It made you think that people in the homosexual lifestyle or the LGBTQI community are full of happy people. And it sounded like it was, this is the life to live. Hey guys, so we are back now with the producer of that film, Here's My Heart, the documentary, Mary Jenna Nixon. She's also the CEO of Uprooted Heart, Inc. Mary MJ, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to uh, TBN Salsa. And um, wow, just watching the documentary, you're like, wow. You know, there's so many people that I know that um, felt the same way that a lot of those people felt mm -hmm. about the church and about how Christians um, feel about the LGBTQ. And I know there's other letters, forgive me, that I don't know them all, community. Um, so Mary, tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, well, I know exactly what you're saying because I was a church kid. You know, I grew up with the word, I grew up in the church, wow. but I didn't know what to do with these hidden attractions that I had mm. from such a young age, yeah. you know, not knowing who to talk to, where to go, because I really felt like God was afar off mm. and I was just this sinner. And so I might as well just step out mm. um, on these feelings that I had, you know, that were deep inside. Uh, what so. was it about the church that you felt it wasn't approachable? I mean, this is what I hear all the time. I have a, a relative who told me, um, you know, I invited her to church and she's like, you want somebody like me in your church? Mm -hmm. You know, tell us about that. What was it about the church that you felt intimidated that you couldn't speak out about what you were uh, feeling? I didn't really have that relationship. So there wasn't really the heart change. And what I believed is that I had to clean myself up before I could come before a holy God. Mm. But what I realized in the midst of when I was in a relationship with another woman for almost six years wow. is that Jesus met me wow. and he was so gentle and so kind mm. and uh, was just longing for me to choose him. But what I love about God is he doesn't make us do that. Yeah, you he's know? a gentleman. And his love is what led me to repentance and wow. his truth is what set me free from a lifestyle of homosexuality. The crazy part about your testimony, I was watching um, stuff on YouTube and 
you were in church with your girlfriend mm -hmm. and you were in such a long-term relationship. And I mean, mm -hmm. I'm a believer. Like I had to give up stuff yeah. to, to, to really take this step to walk into this life with the Lord. So I know it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in a relationship with a man, but we were not married and we were living however we wanted. And mm -hmm. I was in love. And I just thought about you and that, that battle that you had to come up against when you're like, you had this encounter with the savior mm -hmm. and you knew that he loved you and he was calling you out mm -hmm. and calling you for more. Yeah. But there's this person that you loved. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that, that decision yeah. or how that process was for you. Because there might be people that are feeling that they have been feeling that they're falling in love with Jesus and God is asking them to give some things up. Mm -hmm. Um, just to go closer and it's hard for them to get to that point that you did. Yeah. And what I realized is, you know, it's all about surrender, surrendering what we see and what we feel is the best for us and saying, God, I give this to you. So, you know, being in that monogamous relationship for me, I just wanted to love one woman for my whole life, you know, have the American dream, the house, the dog, the cars, the mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And we had planned for that. And I remember the moment where I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, MJ, are you going to keep doing this? Are you going to keep hurting? Because we would go back and forth, back and forth. Mm. Because she as well wanted Jesus in yeah. her life, but didn't know how to love the Lord, but also be in this relationship. Because we were convicted. We were never condemned because God doesn't yeah. condemn. That's the voice of the liar. Mm. Uh, but he was always convicting us mm. to something greater. And so we always had that Wow. between do we choose the Lord or do we choose this relationship? That's powerful. Um, I think what happens is a lot of times as people, we feel that conviction and we just keep doing what we want to do anyway. And eventually, luckily that you and her, y'all kept going to church. So you were able to still kind of be in the presence of the Lord mm -hmm. so you can feel the conviction. A lot of times what people do is they feel convicted and then they keep doing what they want to do and they want to do and that voice gets so quiet mm -hmm. that now your sin or whatever it is you're doing is like screaming and now you're just like well that's just how I am that's who I am mm -hmm. you know and um it's 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 a struggle mm -hmm. so now talk to us from that moment you just you make this decision to mm -hmm change your life, mm -hmm. then what happens? It's amazing. So the Lord gave me Genesis 50, 20, and it says that you meant to harm me, but what was meant to harm me, God used for good to save the lives of many people. Wow. And understanding that the powers and the testimony and everything that we go through, the trials, the tears, the ups, the downs, is everything going to be used to be able to relate to somebody mm -hmm. else to say, I understand that you have these attractions. I understand that you believe that you're born this way, but let me talk to you about what God showed me about my true identity in mm. Christ. Yes. And so we've used that to now connect with so many other overcomers. God is really highlighting stories of people who are saying, I have a different narrative and saying, I have truly been set free because wow. it is for freedom that we have been set free. Yes. And so uh, God woke me up in the middle of the night, gave me this documentary and said, you're going to go highlight and share the stories of 12 overcomers wow. uh, and just lift up their stories. So yeah. we're just so grateful. To What's incredible about it is that now it's, it's a movement. It's crazy at the same time because it's a very countercultural movement. Yes. The culture <laughs> is screaming something else. And here you are, you, you're a bunch of brave millennials, <laughs> or I don't know everyone in the documentary, but you're all young people on fire, lives changed, and you're saying counter what the narrative is of the world. Talk to us about what comes with being that voice crying out in the wilderness. I know it hasn't always been pretty. I received a little bit of hate mail just inviting mm -hmm. Louise to be on my show. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about that, the backlash, and just kind of how you're empowering yourself to just march onward to what God has called you to do. Well, I love the unity that God brings through his people. And uh, like you said, this movement of young millennials saying, you know, we're going to stand with one another and we're going to stand in love because Jesus always went to the marginalized in love. Yeah. And so that's what we do. 
uh, together. And obviously stepping out for the Lord in any type of way, we know there comes persecution Absolutely. because those who are of the world and their mind is conformed to the world, they see the gospel as foolishness. They see our lives as foolishness, but mm -hmm. we know that that's not the truth. So that's why we step out and that's why we speak because we love people. Yeah, that's so. beautiful. What are you, what are you hoping to do with the, the documentary with all these marches. I know you guys are looking to expand. It started in DC and now mm -hmm. you're going to California, I believe you told me. And, and there's, what, what are you looking to do? What are you hoping that the Lord will do through it all? So we wanna connect, we wanna invite, and we wanna equip. So we wanna connect with other overcomers who have come out of homosexuality, who don't have a space that they feel that they can share. Mm. We wanna invite people who are in the LGBTQ community to really hear our stories. And then we wanna equip the body of Christ to be a better bridge to the LGBT community yeah. of how we can reach out uh, to them. So. We have about a minute left and that's exactly where I wanted to end it. For the body of Christ, for Christians, for believers, I think the LGBT community, they are used to seeing people with signs that say God hates gay people, mm -hmm. which we know is not true. Mm -hmm. God loves the world. He, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. How do we uh, approach this narrative, the church? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have that lifestyle. I didn't come from that. If mm -hmm. I want to share with my loved ones, what do I do? Yeah, well, Jesus, like you said, he came not to condemn, but he came to save. And that's his will. And so going on the street corners, yelling at people, telling them that, you know, they're going to hell is not reaching anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have to find a better way. And what I've seen is we try to put homosexuality in its own category as these are unsavable, unreachable people. But when we really just look at people as eternal spirits in temporal bodies, that we can see that we can reach out to them because sin is sin. It does not matter what we've committed. We've all fallen short. So if Absolutely. you see it that way, you invite and you just bridge them. We're just here to be the hands and the feet to invite. And I love that his spirit Amen. is what does it. Does it. He transforms us yes. from the inside out. We don't have to do it. So let's exactly. take ourselves out of that place of having to be the one to save and set free and let's let the spirit do it and let's reach out and love people and, and love invite them. them to church. Because church is not for the healthy, it's for the sick. We Amen. should be the greatest place for people to come when they're going through something like this to come in. Yes. So. Beautiful. Thank you so much, MJ. I am so appreciative just to be able to share about this and talk about it openly. We're going to talk to someone now um, that is in the documentary. Yes. And um, I'm so excited. He has his own little story. We're going to hear from him for just a minute, and then he's going to go, and he's going to sing for he us. He's going to sing. So we'll, we'll talk to him first, Edward Bird. So Edward, we got a little glimpse of just your story in the trailer. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your own victory story mm -hmm. in this scenario. Well, um, for me, I, I had faced many challenges. I found myself, you know, without a father. Um, he was, uh, he, we had a relationship in the beginning, but then he left and mm. he was very kind of abusive to my mom. And so it just left a, a hole in my heart from the abandonment. Mm. And so I found myself trying to find validation in men, trying to find my, trying to find validation in alcohol and relationships and wow. really just giving myself away, putting myself in reckless situations, mm. like really just trying to fill the void, trying to fill that empty space, trying to make myself whole, to feel like I'm worth something because I never mm. got that validation or that affirmation from mm. my father. And I believe, you know, the father is supposed to be the covering. That's the way that God set it up yeah. for a specific reason, you yeah. know, and without that, it leaves you open to the enemy. Yeah. You know what I and mean? And you, you, you do find yourself trying to fill the voids exactly. with whatever. Yeah. And it wasn't until I really, God came and he pursued me in my lifestyle of homosexuality. Mm. Somebody came into a club and ministered to me Wow! because God wanted me. And when, really? I, when I saw that and felt that, I was like, I need to get to know him yeah. and I need to fall in love with him. Wow. Now we only have a minute, but mm -hmm. for people who watch this whole show and they're like, they're all liars. Mm -hmm. They're, look, they're still acting away. They look away. You look fabulous. So Thank you. You know, what do you say to that? Um, people, 
first of all, we have to get this narrative that because some someone is stylish or mm -hmm. because someone is artistic or because somebody is into fashion or somebody, I'm a hairstylist as well, it's my day wow. job, <laughs> that that equates to homosexuality. Wow. It doesn't. That's a gift that I have. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Fashion, I have my own sense of style, my own sense of being. God gives us that. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So we have to really remove the stereotypes yes. and allow to see the heart of a person. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I wish I could talk to you so much more. Make sure you watch the documentary to um, hear Edward's full story. And now, without further ado, <laughs> Edward will be singing his new single, Ran Into You. <laughs> Until I, until I ran into 